Welcome to another edition of Eyewitness Reports on Channel Television. I'm Jomi Otaigbe. The Kobakwe Low Cost Housing Project in Obafemi Owode Local Government Area revives the hope of tackling housing deficit in Ogun State. The indefinite closure of Mustafa Agwai Polytechnic in Nasarawa State, occasioned by violent protests, leads students of the state's own tertiary institution to another unplanned long holiday. From Abeokuta, where it started, the Ogun State Low Cost Housing Scheme is being extended to Kobakwe in Obafemi Owode Local Government Area. Some of the residents of the area see this as a step towards reducing the housing deficit in the state. Ogun State is a major industrial hub in Nigeria. Well, this is partly because of its proximity to Lagos, Nigeria's commercial capital and the fifth largest economy in Africa. As the state continues to witness industrial growth, it is also grappling with the challenge of housing deficit as a result of its growing population. Presently, the housing deficit in the state is over 2 million. Successive administrations have designed and pursued the implementation of several policies to tackle this social challenge. And the present one is not left out. In 2019, Governor Dakwa Biodun commenced the construction of low-cost housing units accessible through mortgage financing for low- and middle-income earners at affordable rates. The Kobakbe housing estate in Obafemi Wode, about 13 minutes' drive to Abeokuta, the state capital, is one of the projects being executed by the state government to deal with the shortfall in housing. <laughs> To ensure quality standards and that the projects fall in line with its timeline, Governor Abiodun, along with some members of his cabinet, embark on an inspection visit to the site of the project, where work on the first phase is in top gear. With the aid of the layout design, Governor Abiodun is briefed on the scope and extent of the work done. When you look at where we started from, we started from Kemta, which we built the first phase of about 125 housing units of two to three bedroom expandable units. We did some in Idiaba, we've come to Kobakwe. The first phase of this project is 500 units of two and three bedroom expandable units. And you are all aware that before we embarked on this project, we did a survey in line with our inclusiveness. We wanted to be sure that the houses we are providing meet the expectations of our people, both in land size, both in the size of the building themselves, both in affordability and location particularly, because we've seen housing estates built in this state in the past that have become a den of destitutes. Nobody bought them, and they are still there as we speak. Um, I, I think we got this right because Kenta was oversubscribed. Even this one that we just started roofing is already becoming oversubscribed. What we're doing here, we're doing in Shagamu, we're doing in Ikene, we're doing in Ijebode, we're doing in Ota, we're doing in Ilaro. We're targeting 2,000 housing units. That will be a history. By deploying direct labor, the project offers employment for the entire value chain of the building industry. Artisans and unemployed youths are engaged in different aspects of the work. Majority of people within this uh, local area are benefiting from it. Because the people are working masslessly and they are getting paid. And in the next two years to come, this area will become nothing but a town. So it's a good privilege. We want to say a good, we want to say everybody will like to say a big thanks to him. It is a huge blessing to yeah. this area. But at least it, it, it's bringing civilization to this environment, as in bringing development as well to this environment. The project is expected to transform the fortunes of the host community. 
it's good to organize this place as it were. You know, uh, probably a few months back, um, it was more of a jungle. But now, looking at it with all these housing units that have been built now, if you come here in another probably six or seven months, but it's now a completion, already it's a city, you know. So, um, the economic impact, of course, the people who enjoy water, road, because I don't see the government putting all these housing units without road or water. You know, and they'll benefit more, which means that he's uh, creating or yielding the dividend of democracy to his people who voted him in as a governor. The Ogo State Minister of Housing is saddled with the responsibility of formulating and implementing government's policy on housing projects and real estate development. The Commissioner for Housing, Jagomolu Omoni, lists amenities that will be provided along with the housing unit. We will be providing all the basic amenities that a community should have. The layout shows that, yes, we have, we have the green areas, we serve as the play, play, uh, playgrounds and play areas. We have uh, spaces for commercials where people can, uh, where we we'll, uh, eventually put up structures for commercial activities. There will be site, uh, site offices, there will be place of worship for both the Muslims and the, and the, and the, and the Christian beliefs. There will be schools and so, so these are basic facilities that we must have in our next state. And we are providing them to complement these good things that, um, that is springing up in Kobakwe. In providing further insights to the project, Mr. Omoniyi explains the drive behind the state government's intent on low-cost housing and its implication on the economy. The housing deficit in Ogun State is about 2 million. It's over 2 million. Okay? And um, if you also see, that figure is increasing. Because there are some basic facilities that are provided in Ogun State and the policies of the, of the, state, uh, of the state government has shown Ogun State to be a, a destination. A destination for investors, a destination for people that want to live here. Because our idea is we, create, we will continue to create smart cities where people could live, work and play. Like now, uh, the rail corridor that has just been opened shows that an average person can live in Ogo State, join the trade, and within 45 minutes or thereabout, you're already in Lagos in Idumata. So, if this happens, it shows that an average person that works on the island in Lagos, works on the mainland, can actually have their houses in Ogo State here, around this corridor, okay, and jump on the train, and within an hour, you're already in Lagos. How much uh, easy do you think life can be, if not that? And... More interesting is the fact that most of the houses that we have proposed have, are oversubscribed. And I'm sure you have the records of uh, the AK Degun, which was built by the last administration, was left unsold. We've finished selling. People are living there right today. The Prince Court Estate, 130 units that the state government uh, commissioned last year, oversubscribed, already allocated. And here in Kobakwe, where we are presently putting up 300,000 units, to be commissioned by, by May 2021. I can also tell you that the, these housing units are already oversubscribed. So this gives the government the courage and the encouragement to continue to deliver this housing unit for the people because this, the government is more focused on delivering what the people want, not what the state government feels the people want. Okay? So we've assessed the basic needs of the people and we see that housing is very important and paramount. And that's why the state government is being encouraged to do more in terms of provision of these basic uh, facilities. The focal point is that, yes, we are creating smart cities, and at the same time, we are creating employment for, uh, for the low-income people. So that the artisans, be it bricklayers, welders, and we have means of sustainability, means of uh, livelihood by providing the direct jobs for them. And these are things that the state government has been able to demonstrate over a period of time. The low-cost housing project currently going on in Abeokuta, Kobakwe and Shagamu has been extended to other areas for equal accessibility, including Ijebode, Ilaru and Ota. The Ogo State Government says it hopes to provide 2,500 housing units by 2023. 
The next report is a follow-up to recent videos sent to us about demonstrations by students of Mustafa Aguay Polytechnic in Nasarawa State, which turned violent and led to the destruction of properties in the institution. Eyewitness videos shows a state of commotion as students of Isa Mustafa Agwe Polytechnic in Lafia, Nasarawa State deploy violent means to express their disapproval of a policy introduced by the school management. <laughs> Virtually every space in and outside the school premises is overtaken by the enraged students holding sticks, stones and any object that could serve as a weapon against any management staff. Amidst the pandemonium, the rector manages to find her way out in her official vehicle. The following day, calm returns and amid tightened security, the students are gone, but the aftermath of the protest which turned violent was glaring. Broken doors and window glasses of officers, as well as other properties, littered the school premises. The security post was burnt among other structures that were torched by fire. Well, the presence of security is here to forestall any further violence. According to one of the students, the action was prompted by the increase of late registration fees imposed on them by the management after it deliberately shut down the online portal for tuition payment. She is adding extra 10,000 about the school fees. When she has closed the portal, she opened the portal last week. It's because of the portal that she has closed it yesterday. It's today that she closed the portal. That's the reason why it made them make the students to protest against the school fees. The increase of school fees has made the students to protest about what was, that's what was happening in the school today. It's about the school fees that makes students to protest. At a press conference, the rector denies these claims. We have not closed the portal. We have not increased late, uh, students' late registration. We have not done that. If we close the portal, then we, maybe the next question would have come up. We have not, in the first place, we have not closed the portal. Registration is ongoing, which is abnormal. Go around all other uh, academic institutions. There is a time for registration, time for late registration, time when the whole, every process will be closed. But ours is even abnormal. We can't talk without knowing why the students reacted this day, what happened, because our portal was not closed. We didn't increase school fees, and students reacted. So we need a committee to look into it and tell us what happened. We need to know the immediate and remote causes of the. Yes. The level of destruction draws the attention of the Nasarawa State Governor Abdullahi Suley, who inspects the level of damage done to facilities at the school. Governor Sule expressed displeasure at what he sees, promising to sanction anyone culpable of the incident. So it's unfortunate we have this type of uh, problem, very, very unfortunate. The time that we are promoting the education, it has taken us uh, some steps backwards. But just like he said, you know, we are determined, we are not going to allow uh, anybody to hold us back. You know, we'll, we'll continue to do the best we can and move, move on the next stage, but it's, it's very unfortunate, it's very, very, very unfortunate. It's not necessary, it's uncalled for, it is criminal, and uh, what have you. I don't know what else uh, name that I would call it. While investigation into the crisis is ongoing, the Mustafa Agwe Polytechnic remains shut indefinitely. This is certainly a setback for the institution, which was set to commence semester examinations before the protest. The Hydroelectric Power Producing Areas Development Commission embarks on a feasibility tour of flood-prone areas in Benry State in a bid to find a permanent solution to the menace. 
In August 2020, Benue State Governor Samuel Otom embarked on a tour of areas ravaged by flood after a heavy downpour within Makode, the state capital. Residents of BIPC quarters, as well as other settlements across the railway line, were the most affected. Public and private properties were submerged. Roads caved in. Three lives were reportedly lost to the flood. One of the victims of the flood shares his experience. Myself and the entire community who have been affected, the that's the previous years back, last year it was the same. The contractors came, they did their best, but hence they were not able to open the, the drainage behind me here, the, the rail behind me. It has been a problem to the community. The water will come and will have no access to flow the other parts of the other community. So it has been affecting the community here. The water used to give a feedback of uh, both my left and my right, and it has been affecting us here. Perhaps the only safe area is where the ecological flood control project is located. However, those living here have relocated owing to the stoppage of the project across the railway. This uh, project, the India Basin uh, drainage, uh, this is the phase one. It was constructed by the Ecological Fund Office of the Presidency of the Federal Government. But uh, for whatever reason, positive of fund or whatever, phase uh, two and phase three have not been carried out. Uh, that's not all. Because now water has been aggregated into this channel. It is now too much. The volume of water is too much for this uh, ring culverts that are here. So when there's heavy storms or when water is released from the dams, then it accumulates here. It cannot pass through. And then it floods the whole, I mean, the whole environment gets flooded. So it's a major problem. So we've approached railway. We've written letters to them already uh, to come and open up uh, bigger uh, culvert here. But it's not happened yet. <laughs> The leadership of Hydroelectric Power Producing Areas Development Commission, Hyperdeck, the body responsible for tackling ecological menaces, pledges to liaise with the Railway Corporation to commence work controlling the menace facing the areas. We have listened to the Honorable Commissioner and um, we'll look for a way, we'll have a way to collaborate with um, the Railway Corporation so that we can commence work on this uh, challenge that faces the communities. From what the commissioner says, um, most of these railway um, projects cannot be carried out without um, working together with the railway. He says as a policy of the railway, the railway, the engineers of the railway are the only ones that can carry out this work. So what we're going to do is when we get back to Abuja, we'll visit the railway corporation and we'll see how we can expedite action on this work. Generally, all the states that are part of the hydroelectricity power producing areas, uh, we are going to address these issues. We are going to address these ecological challenges. We are going to uh, address environmental degradation. We are going to address youth unemployment. We are going to address uh, women empowerment. We are going to address social emancipation of the environment. And we are going to address the issue of uh, power, steady power to the communities so that uh, they cannot be suffering from the existence of the dams and yet not benefiting from them. That is why Mr. President uh, Muhammad Buhari decided to inaugurate this commission and gave us a marching order that he doesn't want the recurring cases of flooding to be disturbing the communities. And that is why we are here as part of our familiarization tour.
and we have come here to see the on-the-spot analysis of the situation. Even though we are sending our technical team to do a reconnaissance of all the areas, but we will pick emergency spots that request urgent intervention. As part of its assessment tour, the board of Hyperdeck meets the governor, Samuel Otom, at the government house in the state capital, Makodi. During the meeting, Governor Tom advocates the need for equitable distribution of ecological fund projects to ensure fairness. Leadership is not an easy task. As we are here, even twins, you can see some kind of difference in them. We are not the same. Our voices are not the same. Our faces are not the same. And so when it comes to leadership, leading people who are diverse in different ways becomes a major challenge. So it requires wisdom from God to help you coordinate and give leadership. And for us, in a democratic setup, it may not be everybody you're pleasing, but once you're able to have a reasonable percentage, then you can go ahead because democracy is about the majority of the people. And so my advice to all of you is to ensure that you're fair in what you're doing, let there be able to, let there be justice. No one can fault you when you stand on those three pillars. Anything you're doing in this life, even if they do, tomorrow they will come back and appreciate the fact that you were fair, you ensured justice, and there was equity. The team also meets with the traditional leader of Idoma to solicit his support towards its flood control program and the need for residents to avoid acts capable of escalating flooding in the state. Eyewitness Report enables you to tell your story with your pictures and videos. Simply post them on the Eyewitness Portal via the Channel TV app, which you can download from the various app stores online. Let's take a look at some of the pictures you sent in for the week. Starting this segment of snapshots sent in by you is a video which captures an excavator demolishing a structure. It turns out to be a building which served as a town hall for residents of First Stack Extension Estate in a more Dauphin local government area of Lagos State. The eyewitness reporter, who is also a resident of the estate, says the bulldozer was deployed to the area in the early hours of Sunday, March 14, accompanied by heavily armed security personnel to carry out the exercise. The Lagos Building Investment Company is said to be behind the demolition of the hall. The reporter alleges that the action was taken without the consent of residents. Next is a video showing equipment in a road rehabilitation work at Gowon Estate in Moson, Okwala, local government area of Lagos State. The eyewitness reporter says it is a response by the Lagos State Public Works Corporation to the outcry of residents over the deplorable state of roads in the estate. The agency has also completed road repairs within a Besson housing estate. Finally, also from Lagos State come these night pictures showing the aftermath of a rainfall around the Penn Cinema flyover bridge in Agege. The eyewitness reporter wonders why so much water will settle at the base of the newly constructed bridge with the provision of drainage. The reporter sees rain as a threat to the structural integrity of the bridge and calls on relevant authorities to intervene.
Thank you for sharing those images with us. We hope to receive more from you. That's the show for this week. Thanks for watching. I am Jomi Otaibi.